Hello, I'm Dr. J. Paul Moore. I'm Joe Solmars. And we would like to welcome you to another segment of Western Swing Rules, produced by our good friend Robert Houston. Today we'd like to talk with you about an area of musicianship, if you will, uh, that we feel receives far too little attention among music playing circles, and that is how to play effective accompaniment, either accompanying another lead instrument or playing behind a vocalist. And uh, the idea is, how do you play in such a way that you do not walk on top of the lead or the vocal and you do not get in their way? Uh, the idea being, uh, how can you do something musically that contributes to the overall sound rather than detracting from it and taking away. So with that in mind, what we're going to do today is play a piece of a song that's pretty standard Western Swing fare. It's a tune that many of you may be familiar with called Sugar Moon. We'll play it in the key of G and uh, we'll take it up to the bridge. I'm going to play the lead and my buddy Joe here is going to accompany me. And in my opinion, uh, Joe is a master at doing this sort of thing. He knows exactly how to contribute without getting in the way and basically how to make you sound wonderful. So I love playing with him. Before we start, though, Joe, is there anything you'd like to add about how to do this technique? Well, before we get into the, uh, the lead part of it, the technique, I'd like to talk about the rhythm just a little bit. Sure. Because uh, when I was a young kid, uh, Tag Lambert got pneumonia, so I got to play with Bob Webbs. And the first thing Bob told me before he took on the bandstand, there was a way to play rhythm. And he liked, he liked to play, used to be called the old sock beat, where you play, uh, you know. And really he liked that because that was with the snare drum. And it made people dance. And then the other way to play, uh, I think Ellen came along, and he played the runs thing, but he played, uh, well, the other guitar player would play this here. He, see, Bob always carried two guitars or so, okay? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you want to get that snap feel in your, in your playing, your rhythm, really. Kind of snappy, you know, to get the rhythm sound. Now, if you'll play the lead, I'll play some rhythm behind you. All right. Straight Sugar Moon? That, you know? Yeah, let's just play Straight yeah. Sugar Moon. That'll be fun. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. the tune I played this kind of thing here kind of like what the second guitar player would play and then I last part of the tune I played this sock called sock beat that's what you call it where I did my hand like that both those feels add to the dancers on the dance floor and, and adds to the rhythm that's why they like to dance to the Bob Wills and the Western Swing Beats because of that beat like that and the drummer would play very simple mm -hmm. you know I liked the way you did use both of those techniques within <laughs> one verse of a song. Mm -hmm. uh, you switched from one to the other, kind of in the middle, mm -hmm. and what that did is it kept it fresh and interesting all the time, mm -hmm. without anything ever beginning to sound overworked or overused. And uh, from my point of view as the lead player, I just felt like um, I was held in a nice little pocket there where... Uh, you weren't going to drop me or let me fall on my face, and I could relax and just play the melody. If you listen to Fade of Love, where Elvin played on it, mm -hmm. you'll see him play it, and the first part he goes, uh... Mm -hmm. Things like that, you know. But then we get to the bridge, he just went... Just it straight. Mm -hmm. Straight in it, it was effective when they mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. That's such a subtle change in, mm -hmm. in sound 
that it almost happens without the listener even being consciously yeah. aware of it, mm -hmm. but yet your ears are aware of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And you love it. Mm -hmm. No wonder his playing was so infectious, you might say. Yeah. The, the beat of the band, the fiddles and the beat. Yeah, really. And the harmony guitars were like Bob Wells, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of, you know, they call it jazz today. It was actually jazz. Because I, I knew some of the great jazz players that played Bob Wells, like Wayne Nichols, you never hear of him, or Woody Woods. Mm. I taught with Woody Woods. He's a clarinet player. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and Bob had his big band. They played on that, you know, so mm -hmm. excellent musicians. I mean, great. Mm -hmm. okay, so now, let's get in and talk about the lead part. You want to yeah, cover uh, that? Because that's sort of the, the next piece of that. that. That was a demonstration of how to effectively accompany a lead instrument. But uh, the next piece is uh, what if uh, you're playing with a lead instrument and you want to play some, um, what most people would refer to as fills, around the lead to add to it and accentuate what's going on with the lead, but at the same time not walk on the lead or cover it up. And uh, we kind of talked about that beforehand, that that's another skill uh, that's important. Jay Paul, a good way to look at that is like a sentence with question with periods, question marks. That's when you fill in, when the periods of question marks are there. Mm -hmm. Like you listen to, I recorded Nashville with Harold, with Harold Riley and those guys for like 20 years, and if you listen to the CDs, you're not going to hear a bunch of garbage behind the vocalist, <laughs> or, or, this, or you know, what I call a garbage, you know? Right, right. Well, and yeah. You're, you're going to hear everything come together. You, you don't get on top of the soloist or the vocalist. You, mm -hmm. you don't play over top of him. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, and I've noticed around, around here, it's a Western Swing, uh, convention or whatever it is, people, the musicians don't listen. They're kind of playing for themselves, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the, the singer's singing or the lead player is playing it, and here's the fiddle or the clarinet just playing on top of them. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but play, a, play a little bit of Sugar Moon, I'll show you what okay. I mean. Okay, okay, sure. And I'll play it around the oh. iron painting. Now, this is, this is demonstrating when you don't listen. Okay, go ahead. His lead playing. Yeah. Now, if he if we do it again, I'm going to listen and I'm going to play around what he does, like the sentence with the, the periods and the question marks and uh, whatever. Okay. Now do it again. Now, now when 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 his melody is moving, I'm stay I'm staying still. Mm -hmm. And when he's still, I move it. Try it again, I'll show you. All right. Okay, that's the way you, you want to do that. And uh, Beautiful. The main thing, like I said before, is listening. You've got to listen. You can't, when you're playing the band, you can't play for yourself. You get to play for the whole band, the entire band. You mm -hmm. listen to what they're doing, mm -hmm. and especially the vocals. Uh, it's just, it just keeps the music sounding better, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and you don't hear that too much, you know? Now, I know when I work with Hank Thompson, he, he, you wouldn't dare do that behind him. <laughs> Hank, Hank and Bob Wills are totally two different people. He didn't like all that stuff behind him, you know, where Bob did. And so Hank would like to, you know, play in between the, the plant, you know, right. and, but not even not too much of that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, you know, music sounds better if you don't put all that stuff in there, you know. Play I, simple. Everybody oh, tries to work play with too many notes yeah. behind the soloist and everything. And just like in the jam room in here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my God, you got, you got people playing everywhere. And, and you, it's, right. it's covering up the lead player and the vocalist both. And it's bad for your nervous system when that happens, mm -hmm. whether you know it or not, mm -hmm. you know. And so the best thing to do is play simple and don't get, on, don't get in the way of the singer yeah. or the lead player. You know, uh, we might interject at this point that our purpose here 
is really not to be critical or put anybody down or, or make you feel bad about your playing. That's not at all what we want to accomplish. But Joel's right. Um, there is a tendency in jam sessions for people to get mentally into the place where this is all about me. And they're so into their own mind and their own sound that they're trying to produce that they're totally oblivious to how what they're doing is affecting everybody else. And it's tragic. I, I mean, I've seen uh, jam sessions just literally derail and turn into a cacophonous mess because of people doing this and not listening. And uh, I also think that developing this skill, uh, you know, I'd like to kind of get you to comment on this too, Joe. I almost look at it like a rite of passage as a musician. I, I know that in my own development as a musician, I have been guilty of these very things we were talking about. We all have. And yeah, I, I just think it's something that's a rite of passage. We have to go through it to ever get to a level where we can do better than that. Right, you have to, uh, music is a hard thing to do, you know, you got to pay your dues, you got to do a lot of things to learn music. To learn it, yeah. And you learn it the hard way sometimes, you know. True, true. And uh, a lot of people will come and tell you, you don't do that, you know, or, or whatever, mm -hmm. which is good mm -hmm. for you. You may, you may not like it at the time, but mm -hmm. then you think about it, and they've helped you out, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, and another thing, like, if, if the lead player's playing low, you might want to play high. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and make sure you don't play, make sure you play softer and don't ever, don't get in their way with, with, with loudness or, or softness, you know. I have often thought that, that when you have two of the same instrument, like we have two guitars mm -hmm. right here, they're tuned exactly in the same register, it almost becomes a bit more of a challenge mm -hmm. than it would say if you were playing with a violin or something that's right. a whole different instrument. Mm -hmm. So. No accident, I guess, that we have two guitars here today. Yeah. So we hope that what we've discussed and demonstrated for you today will be helpful in your playing. And we encourage you to think about it and try to put some of these techniques to use. And thank you, Joe, so much for joining me today and helping. You're welcome. With your beautiful playing. The word today is practice, practice, practice. <laughs> on, on technique and all this. Absolutely. And... Once again, thanks for watching Western Swing Rules and supporting Western Swing music. I'm Dr. J. Paul Moore.